An idea was crafted at a suburban Chicago dining room table. Popped into my head that it might be a fun thing. Jason Schwartz was finishing up a home project when he ended up with some extra glitter paper. And it just turned out that the strip of glitter paper was, was almost exactly the width of a baseball card. So with a little paste and some design taste, he decided to combine the two. A little bit to my surprise, I thought it looked really cool. As soon as you see one, it's become his style. It took a couple of my friends that came by and they were like, oh, whoa, that's super cool. It's like nothing you've ever seen from a card before. 1981 Fleer Cobra. Dave Parker. It's unique, and that's why I think it's picking up so much steam. I don't just imitate, I take it to the next level. Look at this. It's immediately like, oh, that's that's Jason. You know, Dan Jason. Wallach, former Chicagoan and current executive director of Greenville, South Carolina's Shoeless Joe Jackson Museum, knows Jason by his hobby alias, Heavy J Studios. Part of that nickname, like the glue Schwartz uses, I stuck from his college days. What can we do? What are we gonna do? Heavy J is a take on 1990s rapper Heavy D. As demand for this healthcare worker's side hobby hustle increased on Twitter and other places, he decided he needed a business identity, logo, company cards, website, and accompanying credentials. It's a single family home in Western Springs. Probably has a baseball game on TV in the background. A lot of times we say studios plural because it makes us sound a little more important. In, in reality, there, there, there aren't two of them. There's really just one. It's my dining room table. So technically I'm Heavy J Studio, but it just sounds weird. I promise not to tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Some scissors and some glue sticks. I'm buying glitter paper from Joann's plug for Joann's, and I actually have a little bit of a blister forming on my scissors finger. Have you ever been harmed in the making of one of your cards? Paper cuts, you know, come with the trade. But like a good ball player, you're toughing it out. <laughs> exactly. This self-described card collector is constantly harming his own cards to create new ones. As for the reason why, that involves both an economics and history lesson. You've got millions, literally millions of cards from the late 80s and, and early 90s. Those are the cards I collected as a kid. The card companies were just pumping out there. I have boxes and boxes and boxes. They knew people were going to hang on to these cards. I imagined I would retire young or something with, with all the money I'd make off those. And they're worth nothing. The supply eventually completely exceeded demand. That's what ended up happening is they're worth less now than they were back then. You know what? It doesn't matter if I cut up this card because it costs two cents. And I'm sort of taking this ordinary overproduced uh, worth almost nothing card and I'm turning it into something special. He includes these certificates of authenticity. And then on the back, you gotta have the signature, you gotta have the one of one. That cracks me up. Of course it's a one out of one. Like <laughs> you, you cut this, you made this. And what he makes is being turned into donations for a growing group of charities after his growing concerns about equality and social justice. With the George Floyd protests and everything, I think a lot of us were challenged to try to do something to make a little bit of a difference in the world. People like Jason who want to help out, um, they're making it possible for us to continue operating as a museum. It struck me that there are a lot of organizations already doing good things and maybe finding a way to take something that I love and something that I'm good at uh, to help those organizations. It seems like he's doing it out of you know, just the genuine kindness of his heart. The Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, uh, the Dave Parker and Kirk Gibson Foundations, the Shoeless Joe Jackson Museum, the Josh Gibson Foundation, and the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Hey, he figures if somebody wants them, might as well pass the money along to people who can use it. Somebody directly makes the donation and then they'll DM me a copy, like a screenshot of the receipt. It's, it's really incredible. They'll give me their address, I send the card. So I haven't touched any money. He doesn't want any money for this. And uh, it, it just means so much to us that, again, not only our museum, but all the other people and, and foundations that he's helped. <laughs> Card by card, that help has added up to more than $4,000 donated to charitable organizations this year, with Schwartz's card creations residing in at least 15 states and three countries and counting. While he experiments with other sports and 3D card concepts, he has no plans to slow down his cutting, creating, and pasting. Because I had no idea where this would go when I started, but 
I still nonetheless set a goal originally of trying to raise $25,000. That goal achievable? Absolutely. I don't really have a plan laid out that extends very far other than get off work, have dinner, head to the dining room table, sorry, to the studios, flip through some cards and put one together.